Cute. I am en route to go and meet. Do you guys prefer subtitles on or off? Polyamorous couple. I've no idea what to expect. Polyamory, I suppose, is about having the choice of loving more than one person. It's like, do you love everyone that's involved? Is it purely sexual? You know, is jealousy an issue? They're polyamorous, but they're also married, which is an interesting dynamic, isn't it? Because the idea of marriage is absolute unity. It's, it's you and me together. We're on the same team. It's us against the world. But actually, in this instance, it's us and other people. <laughs> do I ever think polyamory would be for me? Absolutely not. No, not in a million years. Um, I think I'd really struggle entertaining the idea that the person I love loves somebody else. Ooh, so we got a virgin going into the poly bubble. We love that. Okay, you guys, for those of you who are new to my audience, I practiced polyamory for a decade. Uh, I'm in a monogamous relationship now and will be uh, for the rest of our lives because that's what we've negotiated. It's what works for us. I think polyamory and monogamy are a choice, a lifestyle like being vegan or a meat eater. I don't see it as an orientation, though some people do. So, you know, we all have a different relationship with it. I just think it's a relationship structure. Like being a trad wife isn't an orientation. It's just a lifestyle, right? Thanks, so but I don't think it's unethical to think it's an orientation. I just wanted to say that out loud. Much. Okay. The couple I'm meeting are called Kathy and Thomas. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. Matt B says, she sounds like you doing a British accent. Thank you. My God. <laughs> my God, I'm blushing. They live in a two bedroom terrace in West London, which will be my home for the weekend. Hey, how are you? Are you alright? I'm good, Jenny. Yeah. I'm Stacey. Hi, Am Stacey. I right to come in? Stacey. Hello, Poppet. Oh. I'm going to put you down. Oh, yeah, no, don't worry. Hello, babe. What's his name? Carly. I got a bulldog at home. Have you? Bernie. Oh. Hi, Thanks, how did you do? I'm Stacey. How's Thomas. things? Nice to meet you. Good to see you. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Okay. I really okay. appreciate it. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's going to be an really interesting couple of days. Uh, your place. Okay, cute, cute house. Cute vibes already. How old is everybody? Do we think 30s? 30s? This is lovely. Thank you very much. Really nice. For tea, tea, coffee? I'll have a tea. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Are you going to be chill, Harley? Don't worry. I'm good with dogs. Harley. How are you with pigs? <laughs> have you got a pig? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, it's just um, chilling in the back garden. What's he called? Uh, Wilbur. Can I just have a quick look? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Wilbur. <laughs> can I stroke him? Can. He's very friendly. <laughs> Hello. Is he meant to be a micro? Yeah, yeah. I've just been mm. upset. Is it sped up too fast, guys? Hey. <laughs> How are you feeling about this weekend? Good. This weekend. Yeah. I'm a bit more worried for you than I am for No, us. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> Do you have honey? No, no. So I've just a drop of milk. It'd be amazing. Thank oh, you. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. So you two are married. Yeah. yeah. And you've been married for how long? Six years. It all happened very quick. We have a son. How old is he? Seven. Seven. Yeah. So when you met, right? We were totally... Ooh, wait. Sage says, I see Polly as an orientation. I grew up most of my life thinking other people have the capacity to like more than one person. But after speaking to mono people, I realized not everyone is wired that way. Ooh, am I bisexual? What am I? Because I feel like I could do anything that works. I feel like I'm not monogamous or poly. I just feel like I'm good with whatever works. Like, whatever's negotiated, I'm down. Let's make it work. Open. Uh, poly. Uh, monogamous with open, sometimes monogamish. Like, I could do anything. You know what I mean? What am I? Am I the pansexual of, of relationship dynamics? I could even do a trad wife relationship, but, you know, I'm the man. Be monogamous. Interesting. Mm. Didn't we didn't know what polyamory was. We didn't know any... What is polyamory? Polyamory means many loves. Which means mm -hmm. you can have mm -hmm. relationships with whoever you want outside of the marriage. Yeah. And likewise, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. can also... Wow. We don't live in this marriage where we sort of hide, you know, the, what you know that we fancy someone or that you know someone's caught our eye. But who floated the idea first? Who said let's not be exclusive? I, from my view, I think it was kind of mutual, mutual. I because we were both sort of on that page. We've been talking a while about sex parties, so we went to a party together. Like it was a complete and utter like joint decision that we go there. We were so scared, like, oh my god, this could actually be the end of us. But like I was like dread from here to here, and then like some mad excitement going on from the belly button <laughs> <Sounds> down. <nice. laughs> yeah. But then we'll go on dates and go to parties and have like more kind of short-term experiences. This is all so interesting. 
Do you want eggs on toast? Yeah. Oh, there's a kid in the picture. Okay. Um, I can always say, I'm like, yeah, I'm always starving. Let's do that then. I'm hungry often. What do you do for a living? I'm a carpenter. Okay. Yeah, I build Ooh, stuff. I mean Carpenter's a cool job. I wonder how much of the stuff in the house he's done. I also think they're like very attractive. I wonder if they have a um any issues with that or if it's better for them. I haven't seen it be a difference in my poly circles. Like it doesn't matter what a new one looks like. People have more or less luck just based off their personality. In the poly circles I was a part of, people were very sex positive and progressive. So it was more or less like what your values were, I think, were what most people were um, considering before engaging. Surprise Puppy says, so are swingers the same thing? No, actually, I couldn't do swinging. That's something I'm not interested in, actually. Swinging is different. Swinging is when you have a anchored partnership, like two people in a relationship, and then swap partners on occasion for just sex. So you're not doing, uh, it's not just an open relationship. It's usually at the same time or in conjunction with. Swinging is a completely nuanced lifestyle. There's actually organizations that have swinging parties. There's swinging retreats. People in Canada and the U.S. that I know of have actual swinging retreats. So it's kind of interesting. Um, swinging is its own little bubble. I rarely visited swinging bubbles. I usually met swingers who came to the dungeon because even though we're not all the same, we overlap sometimes and we can find each other in mutual communities. But yeah, I've never actually been to a formal swinging event. And then relationship anarchy is different than everything. And so that's also something else, but it's also has an overlap too. Really? The table. Um, I'm so, buying a house this year. Maybe you can make me a table. Yeah, definitely. I'll tell you what I'm off. Polly is like falling in love. Like you could spend your life with multiple people at the same time. Like the Marstons. Like the guy who wrote the Wonder Woman comic. They were a polyamorous throuple. Like, or, you know, they had um, three people with kids till the day they died. They were all together. So. Stop. Or a triad. What did I say? Throuple. Triad. Throuple's the wrong word. Triad? I want a marble top nice. because who do I think I am? Yeah, yeah. But like a marble top and just like scandy legs. Nice. I'm gonna have a wider understanding of polyamory. Yeah. Those stairs are wild. Yeah. Non-exclusive relationships yeah. and a beautiful table. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Can I have a quick look around? Definitely. Do you mind? What do you want to see? It's all very open Living plan. Room. It's good when you have kids. Is this where I'm going to be sleeping? Yes, yeah, this opens out into a bed in here. And you've got upstairs? Yeah, you can have a look upstairs. So, bathroom, nice and bright. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> I like your house. Interesting. Yeah. This is Stanley's room. Oh, look at him. This little soup in there. <laughs> Great. No, no, no. Pa Wait, Surprise says, oh, okay, this couple seems more like swingers because I thought the poly three lived together and these people are alone. It doesn't matter. You don't have to live with your partners, guys. Not all monogamous couples live together. Right? Like, these people seem like, these people seem like, well... We don't know. Like you can be polyamorous and single, right? So just keep that in mind. You can be a swinger and single. You can be anything. It's just a lifestyle. It's like saying you're vegan, but when you're not eating food, I guess you're not vegan, right? It's like it's just a lifestyle. Anything superhero. And, and then, then this is your room. room. Yes, this is our lizard. What's he called? Uh, Doug. Hi, Doug. What do you reckon? First impressions. Do you know what? I thought that I was going to find them quite earnest. And actually, they are very relatable. I really like them. True, do you reckon? Yeah, like, it'll get eaten later or the pig will eat. Lots of animals. Hi. Yeah, I like the animals. That's kind of sweet. Dougie, Wilbur. I don't know what the cat's called. No, it's Ark. <laughs> Hello, Wilbur. Are you okay? Who's this? Hello, mate. Do you want to drop me to do anything? I'm really useless in the would, it, would a pig be a deal breaker in any of your relationships? A pig is a lot of responsibility. I used to have a pig. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kitchen. But what should I, I do? I think we've done it. I'm just waiting for the bread to toast. Will I make, make us a tea? You can make tea, yeah. I'll make tea. With brunch ready. I want to know how it feels when your partner fancies someone else. I do actually find it exciting though when Tom meets someone new. And really? He, yeah. Really? I don't know why. I've always, I've always been like that though. I remember from being really young, like fancying a boy and another girl fancying him and feeling 
turned on by it. You genuinely. Mm. My polyamory never felt sexy. It felt reasonable. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, threesomes are hot and everything. But I never got turned on by the idea of my partner being into someone else. It was never a kink for me. It was just made sense to me. I'm like, yeah. Even now I'm monogamous. Obviously, there are other people in the world we would be soulmates with. We just haven't met them. But also, even if we do, we're just going to, like, not engage, right? But obviously, like, it's not, a, it was never, a, it was a, it was really a lifestyle for me. It was never related to kink. It was never related to what turned me on. I just don't mind because it made sense. Like, yeah, you're interested in multiple people. I like multiple people. Okay. But since I'm looking for long life soulmates, I, the chances of finding multiples were going to be crazy. So like my partner is the first person in 33 years that I met where I was like, you, the chances of finding another one is just in, improbable. And I think most poly relationships like monogamous relationships settle. So I don't even think they're all dating their soulmates. I think they're just dating people they like a lot, which is so fine, right? I don't think you have to date your soulmate. Um, Surprise Puppy says, did you ever get jealous? I don't experience jealousy or envy. I don't care what other people have and I don't care about losing things that are, are mine. So my parents didn't raise their kids to be jealous or envious. It's not a trait most of my siblings have. If any of them have had it for a time, it doesn't seem to last long or become part of their personality. I just never understood growing up thinking about being jealous or envious of anybody. I just couldn't care less. You know what I mean? Because I'm just, I'm a very secure person. And I think it, it, security is definitely something I recommend. Even though I've been insecure in my life, not to say that I'm insecure, but when it comes to polyamory or open relationships, like I never minded. The only thing I ever minded was if my partner was with, with somebody that I thought was like really, really dangerous or toxic, then I would put down a boundary, right? Or an ultimatum even sometimes, which I don't really recommend, but. I only feel excited yeah, when Tom on. comes back and says, oh, I quite fancy this other girl. I'd be, see, I'd be raging. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be yeah. so all like that. <laughs> Tom, do you feel turned on when Kathy comes and says, oh, I really fancy someone else? Yeah, I have done. Do you fancy girls and boys? Um, I'd say I primarily fancy girls, but I have played with boys and I'm definitely open to it. But I think that experimentation also helped me sort of understand that I do actually dislike girls. Mm. Still the great sex life. But it's having these other experiences. So it's interesting. So they're they're open poly. So they're not just like romantic poly. They're open poly, which means like they're open to having casual sex with people they're not dating. Because if you're using the word play, then that's usually an indication of like a momentary either sex or BDSM. I'm going to assume they're vanilla. So I'm going to assume it's more vanilla play. Um... Yeah, so they're probably open poly, which means they have a poly relationship, but it's also an open relationship, which means they can have sex with other people and or date other people versus some poly relationships aren't open, meaning you can't just have sex with anyone. You have to be dating somebody romantically to consider them um, like an intimate partner. Not that you can't have sex with people, but that you wouldn't just be having sex with anybody, right? Not just for sex. So in my, I had an open poly relationship, which means I was like, we were both or whoever was in the relationship was allowed to have sex casually with other people and or fall in love with multiple people. Um, so, you know, it's just different for everybody. This is in between. It makes our sex life better. Just spice it up. Fed and watered. Thomas is- uh, Okay, Sage says, play in the UK ha was, uh, has heavy BDSM connotations. Okay, so let's, uh, should we assume they're BDSM? I don't want to put that on them. But I'm trying to, like, be open to the fact that maybe they're using play differently. But, I mean, I trust you to, like, probably know that culturally, right? Off to work. All right, I'll see you in a bit. See you later. I'm ready to go and be completely useless in a workshop. So I'm grabbing the moment to find out how the polyamorous lifestyle works for him. What do his workmates think of the setup? And are they tempted to follow suit? Hello. All right. So this is the wood workshop. Do they know what home life looks like for you? Yeah, yeah, they know everything. Get the, the bloke in. I like that he's open. I like that people are becoming so much more open with their alternative lifestyles. Banter with it, but yeah, just laugh it off and get on this. Do they ever find it weird, some of the blokes? Are they thinking, I don't know how you can watch your woman I with get another lot, man? I, I guess, I get, and I guess that's a common question. Do you get jealous? And I say the same thing I said to everyone, you know, Catherine's not mine, I don't own her. She's free to do whatever she wants. Unfortunately, I don't feel jealousy that much, so that helps. But what's it like 
watching the person that you absolutely are. I'm not gonna lie, bro. He's kind of hot. And so is his wife. Like, they're all kind of hot. She's hot. That He's hot. They're all kind of hot. Like, I'm kind of into this aesthetic. I mean, I obviously, like, we don't match as couples. Like, they're not the same vibe as me. But I think they're obviously physically attractive, right? It's interesting. I also like that he's confident. Um, I would say something similar in my monogamous relationship, which is, like, I don't own my partner. He's, like, free to do whatever he wants. I don't. He doesn't own me. But we are committed to each other. And because of that commitment, we have restrictions. And those restrictions are choices we've put into our relationship. We want them to be there. We're grateful they're there. For the foodies in the audience, I'm drinking or I'm drinking pineapple watered down pineapple juice, Greek yogurt for food, pancetta, and dates. I'm really upset the dates have pits in them. And I'm like annoyed because I thought they didn't. So now I have to pick them out every time I eat one. But dates and yogurt are like one of my favorite snacks of all time you know it's a lies at a door like having an orgasm from someone else <laughs> it's an amazing an amazing sight really yeah. in what sense i i fancy catherine so much like you wouldn't believe like i really fancy i call her my 80s pinup like i, I love that sort of look and so obviously when we're together i don't get to see that so when I can actually stand back and see it, it's the beautiful side. I love it. Actually, can I be real with you? Um, from a sexual perspective, not just the po so the poly. Okay, for me, I'm monogamous, but the poly part of when I did poly was about the love. Okay, the sex part of the open relationship. I also had a similar experience where I just loved to watch my partners have sex with other people. I just loved it. I don't know what it is. Like, it's beautiful. Nah, I'm a voyeur, so that makes sense, right? But it's beautiful. It's really lovely. I don't know. It's it's interesting to see it from a different perspective. Um, Yeah, I just, like, had a really great time with it. Like, I would come home and, you know, we always had sex with our friends. So everybody in our life was our friend. So everybody I was around was, like, just friends I knew. So I would come home from work and he would be in bed with somebody. And I'd be like, oh, hey, guys, what's up? And they're like, hey, what's up? And then we would just talk about, oh, my God, today was such a long day. And I would just sit down and start ranting about my job. And they would, like, be having sex. And it was really comfortable. I was part of a polycule for a while. It was, like, four of us. And it was really nice. And it was so much drama and so much angst. And, oh, my God, we all needed to go to therapy. But it was nice because it was, like, four adults. And we'd sit around. And people would be having sex. But we'd be talking because we were all dating, to be fair, in some aspect or another. Or maybe we were lovers. But – we were all friends. Ultimately, we all were friends. That's like first and foremost. Um, so it's just like a very specific relationship you're having with intimacy that's really, really lovely. You know what I mean? Uh, that I think is really hard to understand in other people's positions. And now that I'm monogamous, it's not that I miss that lifestyle. It's not that I miss having sex with other people. I don't ever think about it. But I'm also doing something different with my life now. So I think that's why I consider myself more of a lifestyler than an orientation because I just don't, it just doesn't, it's not what I'm doing right now. But it was great. Like having friends you could just be so open with was really, really nice. Now I didn't have sex with all my friends. But the ones I did have sex with, I considered friends. Everybody was like, we would all hang out or do board game nights or go to movies or we were friends. You know what I mean? Shadabi says, is that something you'd be willing to consider in the future? Well, it might be an intrusive question, but you brought it up. No, 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 no. Um, we're monogamous. We're good with monogamy. It just wouldn't make sense to us to engage otherwise. Uh, since we're doing the soulmate thing now, we're doing like the people that were like, we feel like one in a million. So again, I think a lot of people, poly people, especially settle into relationships um, or they're comfortable with partners at a different, like, I'm looking for somebody that I feel is like my soulmate. And I just feel like, it took me a long time to find him. I'm not looking for other people. But also, like, we both don't have the spoons. What we want to do with our life, we need one other partner to do it with. Um, so it just wouldn't make sense to do a polyamorous thing. Poly, you know, asking one person to build a life with you is a big deal. Asking two, three, four, that's a big deal, you know? Um, doctor says, Brittany, do you think the sex drive is what drives polyamory, like, with age? Uh, will the lifestyle orientation dwindle among the poly cooler lead to monogamy eventually? Are there old poly people? There's definitely old poly people out there. I don't think it's related to sex drive. I think sometimes people confuse the poly with the sex. 
like this couple keeps doing it right now. And, but they don't mean to do it that way. It's very normal. People forget polyamory is about falling in love and sex is about sex. So I think people forget these are two separate conversations. And I think a lot of people also interchangeably use the word poly when talking about open relationships. So I don't even know if these people, I mean, I know they're poly because they def define poly correctly. Um, but in an open relationship, I think a lot of people who are open call themselves poly when they're just open. So there are old poly people. There are people who die old and together. Some of my best friends are in polyamorous relationships and they've been in them for a very long time at this point. They're probably all going to grow old together and that's great. Um, and they're all very in love and well suited together. Like I couldn't imagine them with other people. So, well, I mean, I guess I could, but like, you know, maybe not to such a romantic depth as the main core of them. You know, Sage says as a bisexual, do you feel like you sacrificed your sexual relationship with women? That scares me a bit. No, I mean, I identify as pansexual, uh, at this stage in my life and I don't because I don't think gender matters. I'm fully in the mindset that gender is a construct and I feel like I married a man who's a woman <laughs> and also um, is genderless at the same time. So at this stage in my life, like gender is not even an uh, issue to me. I don't even see it. I mean, I see it. I understand it logically, but emotionally, I'm not even sure that it exists outside of a concept, a construct of perception. And I know it exists. Like I know there are differences. Don't get me wrong. But in my marriage, it just doesn't seem to be an issue. And so I feel like whether I was going to end up with a man or a woman or a they, I would have ended up with the same thing, a consciousness that I was in love with. But I think in the past it did impact me more. But as the person I am now, no. Um, and we talked about it. We obviously brought it up. It was a conversation we had during our courting stage where I was like, he asked me that same question as well. Um, how do you feel not being with a biological woman? You know, how do you feel about that? And we talked about it and realistically, um, yeah, I'm good. I think I'm just here to love the consciousness at this point. I don't care what their gender is. You know, I just ended up with somebody who's by perception a man and that's okay. You know, Anissa says, I'm sure ace people can be poly, right? Because ace is not just having sex. Yeah, yeah. Um, Evie Lupine is a polyamorous person. BDSM educator and makes great content on YouTube and Evie's ace and Polly and BDSM. You can be BDSM and ace. Like people, like everyone who centers everything around sex, that's just your category. Not everyone is in that category of relating everything to sex. You know? It's like, yeah, it's lovely. Wow. What do you make of... Tom's family set up. I don't think I'd be able to do anything like that. Yeah. Have you got a girlfriend at the minute? I do, yeah. And <laughs> have you floated the idea with her? Uh, we did speak about it and it oh. wouldn't really, neither of us would want to do something like that. It would just be too much to, we can barely deal with each other, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so talk me through your family set up. Are your folks still about? Still yeah, around? yeah, sure, yeah. They know everything about our situation. And are they still together? Separated. <laughs> Do you think that's played a part in how you've decided to live? Um, an element of it. I promised myself when we had Stanley I'd never, ever have him come from a broken family. But there must be times when it's difficult. For sure. We, it's not been all roses at all. There was a scenario in the past where I had a girlfriend, Catherine had a boyfriend, and they ended up splitting up. And then there's nothing weirder than having to help your wife go through heartbreak. Um, yeah, that's damn. That is hard. That is hard. Mm-hmm. Crazy interesting. Yeah. So, and you know, I had to stay strong for her. And, you know, that was hard for me to see her upset. It's not just her boyfriend's feelings. I had a mm -hmm. girlfriend at the same time that I was going to deal with. I will tell you, in a lot of breakups, because we were all friends, we'd have to support both people. Polyamorous communities are like queer communities. Everybody knows everybody. And everyone's dating multiple people. You want to talk about messy? When your boyfriend's boyfriend is dating your girlfriend's girlfriend, and when your husband's wife is sleeping with your husband's friend, like, oh my God, let me tell you, it can get crazy with the drama. Humans are going to human. But yeah, you absolutely need to comfort your partner through their own breakups. Yep, been there, done that. So mad. Yeah, yeah. How many girls do you think, or people, do you think you've slept with since being married to Catherine? 
Ooh, Alice says, I'm just rejoining. Wasn't expecting to see Stacey Dooley on here. Who's Stacey Dooley? Apparently, I should know who she is. I don't know who she is. No idea. Lost count. Not that I've lost count. Probably I don't keep count. <laughs> it's not a numbers game for me. No. I wouldn't, I would, I've just not kept count. I don't know. Like how many sexual partners? Guys, I always lose count. It's so dumb. Every time I start to take count again, I lose it. But also, I always get confused what people are asking me. I'm so like, what? What are you asking me? Like, how many people have you, like, how many boobs have you touched? Oh, God, hundreds. Is that what people are asking me? They're like, how many sexual partners have you have? I don't know. Like, are we talking about how many boobs I've sucked? Dozens. Like, what are we talking about? Are we asking, like, how many genitals I've seen? Well, seen or touched? See, it's very different. It's very hard to answer this question. Their polyamorous foursome had obviously ended in heartache, so I'm curious to find out who they're dating now and how they're keeping everyone happy. Come on. I'm spending my weekend with a polyamorous couple and getting to grips with how an open marriage works. But Thomas and Kathy Whoa, have- Oh, is that them in the past? Whoa, wait a second. And getting to grips with how an open- is this them? Yo, they look so good now. I mean, they look cute then. But is this literally them? Yo, the globe is real, bro. The globe is real. And marriage works. But Thomas and Kathy have got one more thing for me to get my head around. They've been living with a third partner for over a year. She's called Nicole and is from Australia. They call this a thruple relationship or a three-way couple. Yeah, okay, I thought she was pretending to be the third. There is a third. Tell me about Nicole. I knew her from work. She knew I was open. I knew she dated couples. And then I introduced her to him. There was like mad chemistry between them. And then me and her started getting close and like it just all sort of started and to... There we go. And that's how it happens. Become one thing. And she's very bisexual. I'd say I'm queer, which means that I'm open to anything and not really bound by stuff, but I just have something with her. That is so fascinating. <laughs> Kathy and Nicole met when they were working as event managers. Nicole. Oh my God. I love the neurodivergency in my audience. I know Stacy is the presenter I'm watching, Marcy. Who is she? I know, I know who I'm watching. I'm not that much of an idiot, but I mean, like, who is she? Like, you guys act like I should know who she is. Who is she? Tell me. What does she do? What's her background? What is she? Is she a reporter? Like, what is she? I love her already. Mm. Always on her way home. But first, it's time to meet Stanley, who's back from school. Hey, Stan. Hello, darling. Come say hello. Stan, come here. Come tell me about Harley. I've got him here. Come sit with me. <laughs> You're like... Oh, you look good. Was this the complicated part of being polyamorous or open or alternative when you have um, children? Children are a huge deal, but you know, they work. It, there's there's people who make it work for sure. It's, oh, you look like so handsome. I like your outfit. Oh, get in there, Harley. Harley Go on. Uh, uh, TBC. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. What's his um, relationship like with Nicole? Um, loves Nicole. Are you affectionate with Nicole in front of Stanley? Like, will you yeah, kiss? I think I am. Yeah, we kiss on the lips. I put my feet on there. She put her head on me. Like, and so say for example, like you and Nicole were having a bit of a snog on the sofa or a cuddle. <laughs> you walk in. It doesn't make you feel any type of way. Like right. a kiss is one thing, but like. If anything else was going on, you'd kind of... And almost pre-arrange that time, too. So we called it two-time or three-time. So if we were having two-time, or him and Nick were having two-time, or me and Nick were having two-time, like, we'd just say in advance so that people, like, prepared for yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's good. That's efficient. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's date in my teeth. Oh, my gosh. There probably is. Anyways, yeah, I think that's a really... That's interesting. It's really difficult when you're forming the who has time to do what, what are you doing things. I like that they have their own like code words. I like that they have their own boundaries. I think that's really, really good, especially with a kiddo. Um, okay, Sage says she's a British TV presenter. And Ren Bay says she's a journalist and presenter. Okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. She, I love her already. Okay. 
Anissa says, I don't know how I feel about her kind of forcing him to go talk to her, but maybe it's helping him be more open. I mean, kids are always going to feel a little shy. I'm sure he does feel that way. But also, I wouldn't mind hearing from the kid directly. Come on, baby. In here. Good boy. While Kathy gets the dinner underway. When is my pizza ready? I'm eagerly awaiting. Okay, first of all, rude. You better ask nicely, brah. When is my pizza ready? You have, you better have a neurodivergent reason. You ask like, wait, that way. Uh -oh. The arrival of the third member of the thruple. It's really Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Oh my god, they literally look the same right now. Am I what do they look like the same person? How are you? I'm so safe. So nice to see you. Hi. Your hair is like identical. <laughs> okay, good. It wasn't just me, it's their hair. Okay, okay. I literally just had a blow dry. Did you? It smells yours smells much nicer than mine, it's got to be said. <laughs> so you were pally with Catherine at work, you mm -hmm. worked together. Yep. So the first night that you met Nicole. <laughs> bro has a type. Bro has a type, bro. That's crazy. The girls look so similar. <clears throat> Mobo says, I feel like the kid asking that isn't weird. No, no, no. Asking for his pizza is fine. We don't make demands. I don't like people who feel entitled to things. So like when kids say like, like, when is my pizza done? It's like, it's versus like, Mom, like, um, how long until my pizza? Like, I'm just saying the way he asked would piss me off from an adult or a child. It's entitled. I don't like it. Um, Ingrid says he's definitely autistic. Honestly, I was thinking that too. I wouldn't be surprised. From that moment on, it just sort of naturally developed. <laughs> the night went on and it was very nice. And I think Catherine left us. And then yeah. that was it, me and Nicole. I left them to it. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. It is, you know, it is, it's hard finding somebody who's into everybody. That can be hard. That can be difficult, but it's nice what happens. And then what happened when you two were left alone? We partied on to like 4.30 in the morning and then he came to my place and stayed over. Then, yeah. Did you have sex that night? Yeah. Yeah, it was in the wee hours of the morning. Yeah. And you rang me. That's right, I called Kathy. Yeah, yeah. He's on his way home. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I suppose what has surprised me is you have these preconceived ideas and you think they're going to be a bit out there and there's not going to be that much common ground, but they're very relatable. They are very easy to connect with. How similar? Um, okay, they're not like from a, a totally different religion, bro. They're just Polly. She's, <laughs> what is she, why is she acting like they're literally from a different religion? Like they're just Polly, bro. They're just monogamous, but there's like another person. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you think you and Nicole are? <laughs> I'm like a cheap version of Nicole. So actually, if Nicole ever goes back to Australia, yeah, I'm plan B, I reckon. Hey, Stan. You come say hello to Stacey. Hello, mate. Say something. Have you got any jokes? <laughs> No. No? That's your pizza. Does he mean really, really tricky, but a bit of sweaty, a bit spicy? A little bit. Oh, that's a I get it. We got it. He's got a little bit of a tism, doesn't he? Right, just drink a bit of water. Okay. We love it. This is actually really lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. You're welcome. <laughs> the fact that he's eating something different than all the adults, the boy is also obviously neurodivergent. Obviously. Obviously. I feel like the only reason your kid is eating different food than you is probably because it's his favorite thing to eat. He probably eats pizza every day. Completely useless in the kitchen. Really? I swear to God, I can't do anything. Really? Nothing. What yeah. do you do? Just like order in yeah. or eat beans on toast? Order. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Bit of both. Yeah, I'm, re I'm particularly bad. With Stanley excused, I want to know more about the intimate side of the thruple relationship and whether anyone ever feels left out in a three way. So, is there ever a time when the three of you sleep in the one bed? Once or twice, yeah, but we hate that. Well, I hated it. Bro, it sounds so hot, and then you're the bitch stuck in the middle. Have you ever been the bitch stuck in the middle? It's the worst. You cannot get comfortable with three people in a bed. 
I barely get comfortable with two. Okay. 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 Absolutely zero zilch nada. Surprise puppy says this kid is our leader. True. True. Wait, Vash says, really? I typically had different meals for kids because they didn't like the adults' food. Your parents made you your own food. Your parents made you your own food because you didn't like ad what's adults' food? We feed our babies adult food from babies. Babies do not get baby food for very long. Even the families I nannied in Seattle, they only fed the babies baby food for like, a, like barely a year. And then they had adult food made for babies. Like, what's adult food? What's, what is this bubble? Interesting, I'm not judging. It's just such a different idea than like, huh? What do you mean? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Just space. Mm. If we have a massive bed, then that would be an option. But... Three in the bed and the little one said. <laughs> yeah. A bit like that. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> and when the three of you are in the one bed together, is it always sexual? Are you having sex mm. with each other? Well, we were rotating, actually, because this obviously the sofa folds out. So one of us would be down here and two of us would be up there. So it was just circumstantial. It wasn't like, mm. I prefer you today. I yeah. want you. Oh. Hell no, I ain't sleeping on no pull-out couch. What am I, 21? Today, yeah. I'm not feeling yeah, you. Like if, 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 if like me and Nicole... <gasps> Doctor says, when I was a nanny, I had to make different meals for the British parents and the British kids. Is this like a British thing? Ooh, is this a British thing? What bubble is this? This is so interesting. Wait, what bubbles are these? Okay, tell me more about it, guys. My parents made my sister her own food, but that's because she's 100% autistic. That's fine. If you have like like literal reasons, that makes sense to me. Like you're autistic, you have uh, dietary issues, allergies, that's fine. You know, um, I had a lot of friends who ate separate food as kids, but I don't think I did. How interesting. Yeah, my friends growing up, we all ate the same food as our parents. I never knew anyone who did that, except unless they had a dietary issue. Yeah. Bro, my parents made me eat their food or I went hungry. Yeah, that's how it was. You either eat what your mom and dad gave you or you can starve, which babies will do, by the way. And they'll eat eventually, girl. I just don't want their vegetables, bro. Cam Cam says, my mom made separate meals for me, plain pasta. What well, plain pa Okay, first of all, is it the autism? I feel like if you have a reason, that's fine. But in general, like, why are you going to make your mom work that hard? Damn. You know, very common in the UK. How interesting my bubble's being popped. That is so interesting. Okay. Surprise puppy says, if we didn't eat what was put on the table, we didn't eat no separate meals. Like literally, that's my bubble. Which by the way, I love my mom and dad can cook like, oh, so good. Well, my, my mom and dad are great cooks, so we didn't care. But interesting. The boys in my fam also ate something different for dinner. They both had problems with food. That's different. That's fine. Okay. Interesting. Ma'am, I'm begging you to stop asking sex questions. Please ask more deep questions. Mary, I'm feeling the same. Mary, you and I are on the same page. This girl, why are people so obsessed with sex? Ask about the relationships. Ask about money. Ask about like long term. The sex is so, why are people so, it's because the sex sells. It's the sex sells, you know? It's the sex sells. That's the problem. This is so, I feel like I'm getting my bubble popped. This is the millennial bu parent bubble. Stop. I'm an American, but my brothers were a picky eater, so he ate his own food. He's definitely ND. Okay, well. Would, like, the little kids would go slightly different portions of food. The kids would get, like, mac and cheese and some fried protein or pizza, but they were normally younger than eight or nine. Yeah, no, that's so unique. How interesting. How interesting. In the UK, adults eat real food, and the kids usually get a small plate of chicken nuggets and chips or something. I am shocked. That is so different than Middle Eastern culture. I've never heard of that in Middle Eastern culture. I mean, even my white friends, like, they didn't do that either. So that's so interesting. Or my, even my, like, anyone friends. Like, I didn't know anyone growing up who did that. Let me think. I can't think of anyone who did that growing up. Yeah, that's so unique. How interesting. Hmm. I feel like I'm getting educated. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Thank you guys for that. I feel, I feel very educated right now. I feel like I, I popped a bubble, a date. All had been on a date, then Catherine may sleep down here and give us the bed. <laughs> we slept together in the bed last, no, the night before last, yeah. didn't we, and Tom was down You here. too. Yeah. Did you have sex? No. No. Really? <laughs> we were like out to sleep straight oh, away. So the dream crashes. I know. We were too tired. <laughs> it crossed my mind, but I was like, okay.
It's not like tonight. 2 a.m. <laughs> I'm stuck. Did you have sex? Did you like it? Did you have more sex? Do you have sex? Do you have sex? Do you have sex? Damn, girl. She really curious about the sex, man. And to discover that the relationship between the throuple is evolving, and following Nicole's very recent trip back home, an outside influence is affecting their bond. When I was back in Australia, I actually met somebody who I can see as a possible long-term partner. Um, so obviously things change when you meet somebody else. Do either of you feel jealous about the fact that Nicole has met this guy and been blown away? Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that Nicole's met someone. If I'm honest, I did feel a bit shit about it. I've <laughs> never told her that before, but it wasn't like, oh, Aww. someone else is still, because it's a guy, you know? It's okay to feel away about things, right? Like, it's okay to feel away. Oh my God, stop. Phoenix says, why is your English accent so good? <laughs> I'm actually secretly from the UK. It's true. Um, no, I really appreciate that, like, awareness of, like, oh, because, you know, I'll tell you this. When somebody in your poly family or somebody you're seeing finds somebody new, it could mean things are shifting, which is why your feelings could be like, oh, I'm sad for us. And, like, what that means for our life, right? I can't believe I would never compete with a guy. Contrary to what I thought, the throuple seems to be unraveling. Unraveling. There will be some people that will say, this isn't fair on Stanley. You know, it's confusing for him. Mm. What I would say is this, all three of us watched our parents struggle tremendously mm. with having to lie to each other about things to keep up appearances. And all three of us were affected in different ways by that. And we don't want to raise our child in a home where we have to pretend to be people we're not just to keep up appearances. He's very much loved, very much cared for, and we're protective of who comes into our life. Nicole is here because not only is she respectful and kind, but we know that she is a person who has a positive effect on Stanley. Great point. A great point. You know, at the end of the day, as long as you can explain it, as long as you're communicative, as long as you're answering your kids' questions, I really do think the kids will understand. But if you're like me, I also think like who you bring around your kid can say something. So I, I like that they vetted her in a way like I think you should vet people before they're around your kid in a continuous manner. I also came in and bonded with him quite quickly. I gave him some tender loving from the get go. And I think that really worked. He just went to her like was physically like wanting to like be with her, put his head on her, like be like really affectionate with her. Is that difficult for you? No. Now, okay, they're polydynamic. So it seems like the main couple is the anchor couple and they're anchor partners, but the third girl comes and goes. So if the third girl decided to be another anchor partner, then traditionally she couldn't just fall in love with anyone. So if you have a poly home where all the people are living in the same home, then usually it would be abnormal for them to go out of their way to date other people. Like the poly couple we we covered the other day, the four person poly cule, um, they weren't talking about dating other people. They were talking about legally getting represented as married. So you could see them. They were, I think, closed poly. I could be wrong. They might be open poly, but I think they were closed poly because there's closed poly as well, guys, where you have a group of people that are no more dating anybody else. So this idea of like, oh my gosh, you're monogamous. Like, what about other people? Um, Even poly people eventually stop dating people. So, oh, you're poly. What about the eighth billionth person you could fall in love with? Like, girls, eventually? Okay, you need to relax. No. I'm sat here thinking, oh my God, I am so full of jealousy. <laughs> I get funny. I've got a dog, right? <laughs> Bernie. I get a bit funny if he goes to another woman. Really? Yeah, I'm a bit like, that's my dog. That's a bit weird. That's a bit cheeky, if you will. It's a bit weird. I don't know about that. Like, and if, you know, if something happens or whatever, and my guy took the dog, I'd be like, I don't want another woman in the dog. Oh my God. Is that insane? That was really lovely. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Have you got dishwasher? It's you. You are the dish. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, yeah. You can stay, but there's a couple of rules. <laughs> Friday night, and my first evening in the polyamorous home is almost over. I turned up to collar. Up the collar? 
Now I'm discovering how complicated things can get when there are more than two people in a relationship. I think you've had your dinner. Give me a kiss. Hello. 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 I'll see you in the morning, OK? Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Night, Munchkin. Bye, Munchkin. Night. Where are you? Give me a hug. Do you know how many people love to be in your position, Harley Bear? <laughs> <laughs> It's me and you tonight, kid. <laughs> and then there was. Do you think they're gonna have sex upstairs? Do you think they're gonna bump uglies while she's literally underneath them, bro? Or do you think they're gonna be virgins for the night? I swear to God, if they show us humping sounds, I'll scream. Two. In terms of my thoughts on Polly, like. There's certainly a great understanding of why it works for them, seemingly. With the thruple in a state of flux, I'm wondering how much long it will last. Kathy and Nicole clearly share something very special, so tomorrow I want to spend some time alone with both of them to get their take on the relationship. my first morning sleeping over in the home oh, look at this my mouse i love him of a polyamorous family <laughs> seven-year-old stanley is making sure i don't have a lion oh that must be a weird wake up i'm not going to play it's kind of a weird wake up right there yeah. it's so what you say here isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I slept so well. Yeah? Wasn't Harley with you the whole night? The whole night. Oh, so sweet. Oh, my boy. Right, I'm going to go and have a wash. Towels and whatnot. Oh, Managing. Okay. <laughs> Jessica says Bumper Uglies are so American. Levi says a quick little shag. A quick little shag. I feel like so far, so good. They're very accommodating, very inclusive. <laughs> In every sense of the word. I think the plan today is I'm going to spend time with the girls and I think it was really useful speaking to Thomas on his own yesterday because inevitably when you take people away from the group dynamic. Will the three girls have sex? Will they bump uglies? That's the question. You think she's going to ask them? Are we going to have sex because we're hanging out? She see, that's it. She, we're able to learn more about them and where they sit and how they feel. Hi! How are you? Uh, thinking to go for a walk with a dog if you uh -huh. want to join. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I? Yeah. Are we taking the pig, just the dog? No, just the dog. Oh, oh the pig's my coming. God, I can't oh. bear it! <laughs> Holly, come on, come on quickly. So what is the pig for? Is he just a pet or they're going to eat him? You're a good boy. And so tell me a bit about your backgrounds, like growing up, were you, were you always quite experimental? Were you quite straight? Were you a good kid? Mm, I would say my parents went to church every Sunday, as I did too. And there was a whole lot of keeping up appearances that happened in my family. This kind of external pressure coming through church and, and in society in general. And anyway, I was rebellious, so I left home very early. Um, left home at 15. Wow, Whoa. that is early. Yeah, I went to live at a friend's house on a sofa. I'm wow. just super independent. I have been my whole life. And then I was a stripper for years. Woo! Okay. I started dancing. We've got a sex positive, a little group here. Okay, so sex positive. Um, polyamorous, queer. Okay. Okay, we love it. We love the representation. Because I was poor. I needed money. Yeah, it can be good money, right? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The friends who have done it, they used to make like over a thousand pounds a night. Yeah. So your mum and dad now? They're both still around, not together anymore. What do they make of your family set up? They don't judge me. They love Nicole. They get on so well. Hmm. How do you feel right now about Nicole? Um, my behaviour's being controlled by being respectful of her new situation because there's been a change hmm. that none of us kind of like prepared for. This yep. guy in, yeah. in Australia. 
How did that make you feel? I was gutted. I feel like you really love her. I do. I do. Aww. I really love her. Which is surprising, because I don't think I've ever loved a woman like that. Do mm. you honestly believe that Thomas has no issue whatsoever with how you feel, how in love you are with Nicole? No, not at all. Forever. I will never, ever, ever leave Thomas. Never. If yeah, see, this is where I would talk about anchor partnerships and building a life together. And if that, see, if I was in that in love with somebody else, I'd be like, hey, let's make a life together. Um, you know, that works for us. But also, I understand if they want to do primary. I don't know if they do primary and secondary partnerships. So maybe they're the primaries and she's a secondary and that's why she's looking to leave them. Because obviously, like, she's not prioritizing those relationships. See, this is what's interesting about the poly dynamics is, like, are is she a secondary and that's why she's, you know, fall, this new guy coming in is, like, an issue? Or is she not a prime? You know what I mean? He said, you know what? We've had fun. We've experimented. We've done our thing. I just want it to be you and I. Do you think you'll ever want that? Maybe when I'm 16, I don't have a sex drive. I don't know, maybe. See, they always associate it with sex. So when I say like most poly people are also settling in their relationships is what I'm trying to say is when they talk about changing the lifestyle, they talk about sex drive. Even monogamous people that are like, oh yeah, maybe I'll stop. Like maybe I'll fall in love when my sex drive ends. It's like, okay, so you're not talking about your like your soulmate, bro. You're talking about companionship, right? Or you're talking about not being adventurous so when things settle. When I'm talking about soulmates or polyamorous people that grow old together, and again, you don't have to. You know what I mean? Um, But, you know, it's just interesting the way they all talking about it, you know? And says, do you believe it's possible for people to do relationship hierarchy? Yeah. I mean, I did relationship uh, hierarchy for a while. Um... I don't, I mean, it works, but it's, um, it works, but it's not a traditionally long-term solution because life takes you in different directions. Like, let's say you have a couple who's in a partnership and you each have partners. You guys are the primary and they're the secondaries. And this person goes off and marries somebody else. Well, all of a sudden they're like not in the relationship anymore. But in a long-term relationship, I've seen some secondary primary relationships work, but usually it takes people's different temperaments and what they want from the relationship to come into play. You know what I mean? But like it, it, anything can work. It just, you have to have the right combination of the right people in the right circumstance to make things work. So, you know. Surprise Puppy says maybe the Australian girl feels like a side chick and wants something for herself. Well, that's the question. Is she the secondary? Is she allowed to be a primary? Can she be with them long term? Because sleeping on a couch is not being a primary. I ain't sleeping on no couch. But also, like, I don't want to sleep in the same bed. Like, she would, they would have to get a bigger place. She would have to get her own room. Or even, like, um, maybe they have a long distance relationship. But either way, like, there's something here. You know? Mary says, I mean, it could be cool if a soulmate had a similar sex drive than you, had a similar sex drive than you. Mm. We, like, it should match up, you mean? Livy says, why wouldn't falling in love make your sex drive go up? Well, because people don't associate settling down with falling in love or um, leaving the fun behind to settle with, like, falling in love. Yaya says it's even in the phrase settling down. Yeah, like, people settle down. It's like they take what they like. It's it's like they're giving up or something. And says maybe poly is about sex for most poly people. I mean, very possibly. I think sex is probably the reason a lot of people are motivated to be in a lot of circumstances and in relationships in general. Um, but if you're not sexually focused or primarily interested, like we've had this discussion here on this channel before. Like, what if your partner has a medical emergency and can't have sex anymore? A lot of people are like, I expect the relationship to open up. I don't expect my relationship to open up if that happens. I wouldn't even think about it, to be honest. Um, my partner and I aren't concerned with that. We're very specific kinds of people. So we're really not concerned. Like if for some reason one of us gets in a horrible accident and we can't have sex ever again. Oh, no. We're not really concerned with things. Um, obviously, we'll be able to be intimate in other ways. But it's not the sex. It's not the, you know, it's not the 
that we're really concerned about. If you guys didn't see that, I'm scissoring with my fingers. It's not about the scissoring. It's about the intimacy. You know what I mean? Write that down. That's a good one. That's a good quote right there. Mary says, what differenti differentiates, differentiate, you guys know what I'm saying? A primary from a secondary partner, though, usually obligation um, to the longevity of the relationship, financial contribution, how much time and effort's going into the relationship. So when I did polyamory, we did hierarchical or we were interested in it. We didn't really do it, but like we were interested in it. Um, we also use the word secondary for temporary relationships if people felt comfortable with it because they seem to where like we were dating other people, but we weren't looking to make them primaries, Like, but we wanted to date them for long, short term. So it just depends on how you want to do it. it. It's really it's so negoti negoti negotiable. Like it's all up to you. You have so much power in your life. You have so much say in your life. You know what I mean? You just have so much say in what you do, which is so exciting. You just have so much more control than you think. You know what I mean? You know, you have so, thank you, Shadow B. It's not about the scissoring. It's about the intimacy. Amen. God, I'm so good, bro. I should write a book. It's fire, babe. You know, it's fire, babe. But yeah, it's, it's all what you can negotiate. It's all what you want to make it. You know what I mean? But ultimately, you know, you have to know yourself well enough to know what you're looking for. You, but and most people do get into poly, do do great random adventurous things to figure that out. Um, I certainly would say that I, that was a part of my journey as a person was getting into open or poly, poly polyamorous relationships to try to learn who I was. But also I was, I, like I said, I'm really lucky. I've dated mostly friends. Like you, when you join a community and everyone becomes friends, I don't know, it was much more casual. Yeah, it says if you're hoping that your marriage will eventually open or close without communicating or deciding with your partner, it will probably end messily. Bro, communication, bros, communication. I go through phases. Sometimes I'm like, sex, 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 sex. Yeah. Other times I'm like, don't touch me. <laughs> Do not even look at me. Yeah. Get me a cup of tea. We are going to sleep. I think that is quite normal. All right, Holly, come, mate. Kathy clearly has strong feelings for both Nicole and Thomas. But for the throuple to work, all three have to be equal. So I'm interested to find out what's going on with Thomas and Nicole. I feel like there's a real, for want of a better word, like energy between you and Kathy. Yeah. Um, you and Thomas less so yeah. at the moment. Where are we? Like, what's as, happening? As in the throuple relationship? Yeah. Thomas and I, we're now we're closest friends. Friends. So as it stands, at this moment, you have come out of a romantic mm -hmm. relationship with Thomas. Mm -hmm. There's still something bubbling between you and Kathy. Yeah. You've met this guy in Australia and you're <laughs> thinking, I got a lot to think about. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So her and Thomas fell out of love and they're good as friends. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. This happens. Ah. There's like... Oh man, <laughs> when you when you tell all of this to your pals in Australia, are they like, have you lost your mind? <laughs> no, because they know me. Right. They're like, oh, that's just Nicole. Right. Yeah. Like, I, oh, I've always been a little bit different. So with Nicole and Thomas drifting apart, it seems that the throuple might be coming to an end. Damn. <laughs> if you look very carefully, it looks like he's got a pair of stilettos on. Thank you. <laughs> do love bacon. I do love bacon, let me tell you. The contradiction. I know. The contradiction. Woo! Mm. <laughs> and says, not going to lie, the drama is why I'm interested in watching the poly relationship content. Well, I just think everyone... Okay, first, there's so much that goes into this, right? This is why life is messy in general. Are you being introspective and having a... Are you being introspective? Do you have a relationship with your consciousness? Probably not, right? Because like most of us aren't raised to do that. It takes a lot of effort to do that throughout life. While you're figuring that out, you're meeting people and you're dating and you're having relationships with them and you're breaking up and you're getting back together and you're figuring it out 
And then along the way, you decide to open your relationship or you're poly and then you're poly and all of a sudden you're dating multiple people, but you're still trying to figure out the relationship with your consciousness. So you are obviously learning multiple things at the same time. How do I love? How do I love myself? How do I do things? Sometimes I'll have people tell me like, oh, we've decided to be in a committed long term relationship. I was like, so you basically got like married and they're like, um, sure. And I was like, mm. See, when my husband and I got married to us, it was significant because we don't marry people. It's significant because we're very picky. We don't date a lot of people. We don't marry people. We're our firsts, like marriage, right? Like we married each other and only each other. With other people in my life, a lot of them have been divorced. A lot of them are open to living with their partners and calling it permanent. A lot of them tell me, oh, I'm in a relationship, it's forever, and then it breaks up. Because like, when I think you're going to be in a relationship forever, again, only with this particular model of being together forever, there is a vibe in a couple who's about to do it forever. People have vibes to their couple that I'm like, okay, I get it. A lot of people I meet, I'm like, I give it five to 10 years or four to five or four to six. You know how many divorces I have predicted in my life? A lot. And it's not because they're bad people. It's just because they don't have the thing. They don't have the thing. I'm sorry. You don't have the thing. Okay, there's a thing people have. And if you have the thing, you're probably going to do it. But usually it's a cope. Usually when people are like, oh, yeah, we're in it for the long haul. I'm like, cool. Which is why it was so offensive to the people in my life because I was living with my partners. They'd be like, we're getting married, right? I'm like, I mean, I'm definitely fighting for us. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm definitely fighting for us. They're like, so let's get married. I was like, mm, I'm definitely fighting for us. Because we weren't, I wasn't sure we had the thing. And I was right. And I was right. You know what I'm saying? Mary, damn girl, can you predict mine? No, I am not predicting anyone in my audience. No. But like, you know what I mean? You meet people and you're like, okay, they have the thing. I even, girl, I've even told my friends, I was like, don't marry this person. You're going to get divorced. I give you five to six years. And they're like, that's not true. Got married and who got divorced? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people got this thing about them. And usually what I, usually what it is, is because they're not on the same page. That's usually a heavy part of my predictability is just probability. They're not on the same page when they get married. They're definitely not going to be on the same page. That's usually how I can tell. I'll give you, see, that's how easy the secret was. The secret is if they get together and they're not on the same page and they say we're in it for the long haul, they're probably not. They're probably not. They could be. Probably not. Is that your dad? The Thrupple have a big night out planned for me. So babysitting duty falls to Kathy's dad, Derek, who will be staying over to look after Stanley. Stanley? How are you? Stacey. I'm Stacey, how'd you do? So nice to see you. Let's go in. I think it's that kind of household. Nice to meet you. So you're on babysitting duties. I am, yeah, I am. Are you staying here tonight? I am, yes. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. well, you guys have, can have a, a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very progressive uh, family. My parents could never. <laughs> That's very progressive. Tonight. Yo, doctor says, yeah, this is just a casual marriage. No, literally, though, do you guys know that bubble? I meet so many people that casually get married. It just doesn't mean anything to them. They would marry a friend. Like, I, I meet a lot of people that are very casual about marriage. They see it as a document. They see it as not a big deal. They would marry their friend if they needed to get into a country. Like, you know what I'm saying? I see people who, who marry people all the time just to keep dating them. Like, people marry people for the most casual reasons. Not everybody's like... Uh, nobody, not everyone cares about paperwork. You know what I mean? I care deeply. I'm not doing paperwork for nobody. I have to love you deeply for me to do paperwork on your behalf. Hi guys. We're gonna get our nails done. The Thrupple are taking me to a club night where Kathy has organized a dating event for curious individuals. Oh, how oh, nice. Oh my God, I could add a massage. The event is followed by a strip party where both Kathy and Nicole will be performing. So, my God, my God. They need to look their best. My feet are gross, I'm so sorry, I'm really embarrassed. I'm gonna put them straight in so you don't. Was she not wearing socks? Was she literally not wearing socks? Guys, if I ever put my foot in a tennis shoe without socks, 
That's wild. I'm not demoralizing it, but oh, I could never. Yeah, oh, the texture alone. Oh, so good. Oh, this is literally perfect. I'm going to look great for my stripper party. <laughs> Don't try and hire me, girls. Have you performed yeah. before? Not like that, no. Wait until you see her perform. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Every time that... No pressure, that. Damn. Damn, Discord. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> now that is the picture. I'm going to post that on my Twitter right now. Can I post this on my... I'm gonna post this, can I post this on my Twitter? This... This is a post. This is a meme. This, this is art. This is what love is. 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 This is beautiful. This is fucking <laughs> Discord. Y'all join the Discord right now so you can fucking see this photo or go to my Twitter. This, this is love, bro. I'm posting it right now. This is love. You're beautiful. Look at you, all starry eyes. Mm -hmm. I know, we do gaze into each other's eyes quite a lot, don't we? You two so clearly have a connection. Do you ever feel guilty regarding Thomas? <laughs> Why would I feel guilty regarding Thomas? Because you have such strong feelings for another human being. It doesn't stop me from feeling love for other people. I never feel bad. I don't even think about it. It's just such a weird concept. Wow. Except to me that Thomas Who would... muted me? Who muted me? Was it you, Jessica? Was it you, Colleen? Maddox? Who muted me? Ingrid, was it you? Harmony? Who muted me? Who did it? Who muted me? It was definitely Mary. I know it was Mary. I know it. I know it was her. I know it was her. Look, guys, you need to make more memes. So boomers like me can join the community. You need more memes. We need more memes. Okay? You need to make more memes. <laughs> you need to make more memes. And you need to do them so people can join this community. We need memes of just me muting myself. Fuck. Welcome to the community, guys. Welcome to the stream. I'm so glad to have you here. Where Brittany many times over mutes herself. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay? Fuck. Even think that? Even, I'm sh pretty sure it doesn't even cross his mind. Wow, that's bright. This is perfect for the party. I'm going to look like a secretary at this party. <laughs> I'm going to look like I've turned up for the admin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of okay with that, actually. <laughs> Back at home with finishing touches complete. Bye. See you there. We head for the night out, and the thruple are clearly keeping their options open. Nicole, yeah, are you looking to pool tonight? Hell, I wouldn't mind. Are you looking to pool tonight? Everything is always about sex. I get it though. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> are you looking for a girl? I could do with a girl. If she pulls, it'd be like, it'd be great. I'll probably bring them over to meet Thomas and Kathy. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so good. Like, um, so. <laughs> in fairness, we've never been out and not pulled, so it's like. Um, are you getting tested? Is this a one night stand? Like. <laughs> yes. We're too hot for our own damn good. Stop the car. <laughs> I'm excited to see the guys in action. My nightmare. I've been to a lot of clubs, a lot of bars, a lot of stuff, only queer mostly or pansexual or very like progressive. Um, but honestly, oh, I, I false. I could never now at this stage in my life. But OK, let's see how it goes. We're in an underground club in central London and with Nicole on the lookout to pull, I have my eyes peeled. Catherine. Oh, she's quite nice for you. The blondie? Yeah. 
is pretty hot. Yeah. I love that you're already setting me up. I know. You and you. Amazing. You and you, not so much. I don't get it. Are they looking for a one-night stand right now? I mean, needless to Oh, is this the dating event? I'm sorry. Did I lose track? Is this the dating event? The vibe is very liberal, very accepting, very anything goes. Just a loads of interesting people figuring out who they want. Oh, no. So, the girl that Nicole thinks is quite hot. Watch this space. No one can say you don't share. No, it's true. I'm a very giving person. Yes, it's true. Catherine is just so chill. And I believe when she says that she doesn't feel any type of way when they're talking to other people. She's beautiful. But she's got a boyfriend, so I don't know how she identifies. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure how that is. I didn't get there yet, but we'll work on it. Yeah, yeah, says, what are some questions you'd rather people ask about poly relationships? I mean, I'm more curious about the finances and sustainability and longevity. I'm more interested in whether or not they plan to actually be anchored to one another. I'm more interested in the dynamics. Like, sex is easy to figure out, but I think so many, well, it's funny because, like, in other places around, isn't the UK, like, one in five people cheat? Didn't we just look that up the other day? It's not like y'all aren't, like, sleeping with other people. So it's not about the sex. I think it's about the openness. I'm going to be real. I think when people are asking about sex, they're actually shocked about the openness. I really think that's the thing. People are shocked you can openly talk to your partner about sleeping with somebody else. They're shocked when you can openly have conversations with somebody else. You're sh they're shocked when sometimes the first person people open up to is their therapist. You know, sometimes in life, the only person you've ever had a chance to open up to is a medical professional. You know, it's not necessarily even your your intimate relationship like people you're in an intimate relationship with so I think if I'm being even more thoughtful about the conversation every time she's asking about sex she's really asking about trust hey what is it like having a relationship in which you can trust your partner to have this conversation without it becoming a part of the jealousy issue all the fights I ever had and my relationships were never about who we were sleeping with. Like, it wasn't about that. It was about the trust in the, the sanctity of the relationship or the safety factors. And, and that's something to think about. And by the way, the only time I ever denied my partner's accessibility to somebody, I was right. That person ended up being a horrible person who, like, basically tried to destroy our lives. So, you know, the one time I told my partner, like, you can't, don't do anything with this person. They're definitely unhinged. They didn't believe me. And they decided to cheat with this person because they thought in this, it just ended up being the worst thing ever, which is fine because it ended up leading to a breakup, which ended up me with me meeting my husband. So you know what? It all worked out. <laughs> I mean, it was devastating at the time, but it also proved to me that I have a really good sense of character and I'm good at judging people. Um, and I shouldn't doubt myself because I was right about that, you know? So again, it's about the trust. You're really saying, hey, can I trust you to be honest with me? Um, and the truth is, is sometimes people, people are, are very complicated, right? Um, and says, did you watch the four people probably cool and how they manage their finances? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched that. That was pretty cool. I mean, they divided, they shared an account mostly. They all had their own accounts, but they shared a main account, which is cool. But see with this situation, it's different where in that polycule, they were like, I think closed poly because they didn't mention anybody else. But in this situation, they're an anchored couple with a third who comes in and out and is possibly leaving. So it's a different setup. I, I doubt she has a bed at their house. I doubt they're looking for a bigger place for her. I doubt they're going to mix finances in a particular way. So that's the stuff I would want to know about. Are you guys in this for the long haul? What is it? Right now, this has all been focused about sex, basically. But I would like more conversations about what do you envision for your life? Where do you want to be at 70? What kind of a relationship do you want at 80? You know, who do you imagine near you at 90? Nicole is going to have to put romance on the back burner as she and Kathy have got to get ready to perform. Wait, N says, it's actually so rare for me to meet people who get tested regularly, like more than twice a year and literally it's free here. That's actually kind of funny that it's free. I just get part, like usually I would get tested before every new partner is kind of how I do it. So like even my partner and I, my now husband, before we met, we both got tested and then um, I got a birth control and then he flew to America. Whether we were having sex or not, we just prepared. 
because we didn't know if we were going to be into each other physically until we met because you know you never know until you meet once he got to america and we met up obviously bada bing bada boom but like okay and so we were already prepared we just wanted to prepare ahead of time um you know it's it's difficult if you're active see are they picking up people at this club right now well you know testing doesn't always work that way you can't just you know things take time to show up on tests you got to ask for specific tests you know what i mean like there's so much that goes into safety in terms of sti prevention or lack of spreading and so it's it's one of those things where I, i'm not even sure you can even practice safe sex if you're having one night stands because like how are you even practicing safe sex in that case like Change, you got some. Girl, you do you. Don't film the Brazilian one. I'm going up an inch. Okay, sweaty but ready. Thomas, look at your girl. Happy. Oh, I think she just wants to warm up so she can give me and Nicole a lap dance. Wow. I've never had a lap dance with a girl with such an ass. Kathy can't assume that I'm going to love this. She's going to have to try really hard. Come here. Okay, I'm really concentrating. Hi. With Nicole by my side, I am ready for anything. Pull that dress up, babe. I've got white legs. You look amazing, Kathy. I've been to a strip club. I've gone lap dances. If I'm being honest with you, it's actually not my favorite. I prefer just to watch from afar because I'm such a voyeur, but I don't really like, um, I don't really like a lap dance. I mean, I like a lap dance. I also took a, a lap dance tutorial class at a queer dungeon and that was so fun. Um, the, actually that girl was really good though. That girl, we did a lap dance. That was really good. Um, but still like, I think I prefer to watch from a distance. Turned on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. and well past my bedtime. So as the party heats up for Kathy, Thomas, and Nicole, you're a star. Cool. I'm calling it a night. I think it's in your top ten of lap dancing. She's definitely in my top five. She even stay out with them all night. That's interesting. I have... Yeah, my top three. Sunday morning and I'm in West London spending my weekend in the home of a polyamorous family. Oh, wait. This morning I'm joining Kathy's dad Derek and his grandson Stanley. Hi, are you ready to go? That's us. Yeah, on a trip to the local skate park. Ooh. All right. Oh, wow, that looks cool. Ooh, nice outdoor skate park, bros. My childhood, cute. Drop Stanley off and then you and I love a chat. Yeah. Is that all right? Oh, he's off. <laughs> I want to find out more about what Derek thinks of his daughter's unconventional relationship. Cool. Here he is. <laughs> Still in one piece. Tell me, when did Catherine tell you that Thomas and Nicole were an item? And how did that make you feel? A um, little bit confused, frustrated at the time, because I'm thinking, as normal, you know, well, Thomas is your husband, you know, are you happy with it? And to what age do you stop? And, and you, know, all those, you know, all those issues. Tell me your thoughts on both Thomas and Nicole. Um, I've never delved into the whole picture as to how, why, what, when, so, because I don't want to. It's like the details, it's like, no, 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 no. It's like that kind of detail, but. Ooh, wait, Ingrid says, well, skate parts like that exist. I guess where you are, they maybe, are they just indoor? Because obviously in California, there's skate parks everywhere. We used to do the fan skate park. Um, Cara Beth Burnside taught me how to drop in. I learned how to drop in when I was a kid because she taught me. She's a pro, if you guys don't know who she is. She's female rapper. I went to a women's skate event where they taught girls how to skate. It was really cute. I was, I don't remember how old I was. Probably like, I don't know, 11, 12, 10. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, this is like a normal skate park. Like Cali's all skate parks, outdoor, indoor, uh, concrete, wood. It just depends. You know, I know they had a relationship. 
and they've had a relationship and they still have now a, a truffle relationship. I still find even the word truffle is quite difficult. Truffle, yeah. Truffle, sorry, yeah. not truffle. Do you think they'll stay together forever? I sincerely hope they do. Not only for their sake, but only for Stanley's sake. Wait, who, the couple or the thruple? Do you think he understands that his family unit looks different to probably a lot of his friends? That's the thing, though. Is the third girl a parent and in the relationship, or is she just here for now? I'm sure if he's fully grasped that yet. I think that will come out over the next couple of years when he, because, you know, he's... As a, as a girl. See, this is the question she didn't ask them. Are you here for long or are you here for now? Because that changes. Even in polyamory, guys, you can't just fucking date anybody. You got to think about the structure of your relationships. Oh, my God. You got to think about bills and retirement and medical bills. And like you got to think about your lifestyles. If you're out here having sex with other people, you're risking pregnancy and STIs. Like you really got to think about things, feelings. Like, again, is the, I, get, I did not get the impression at all that this woman is in any way a parent or a staple to the boy. So am I getting the wrong message here? I'm so confused. I hope they didn't tell this kid she's a staple because like that really sucks. She's not giving an indication to me like she's going to be in his life forever. I hope like, okay, now I'm being critical because like if this impacts the kid in a negative way, I'm annoyed, you know? goes off a bit more, you know, so it's, it's everything they are and I hope, I hope they do stay forever, you know, they might have their things and if that helps them keep their marriage, you know, happy. And I look back on myself and think, would we have been happy if I'd have done the same as them? And I, I'm thinking, I'm not sure, might have done, might have been. Do you want your water? And some sweets. There's a 20p there. Come on, let's go. Come on, mate. Back home, I want to find out from Kathy what I missed. I really want coffee right now and it's too late. It's 12.30 a.m. <laughs> After my early exit last night. How are you feeling Good. this morning? Yeah, surprisingly fresh. You look fresh. Who was giving the dances? Everybody. There was just a queue of people yeah, waiting and whoever was came out next was like, come on, and then just went in for dances. Oh, brilliant. How many do you oh, think you what? gave? Uh, the 21. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Such a good dancer. Oh, thank you. so good. <laughs> Hello, Hi. darling. Did you have fun? <laughs> Had a lot of fun. Are you making nut roast? Oh, you know me, yeah. Ooh, yeah. An absolute wizard. So commercial. Yes, very domesticated. We should actually do something. Is there anything we can do? The washing up this. in about an hour and a half. Okay. This is my first nut roast. You're doing a great right. job. Yeah. That was a worried Wilbur. Honestly, she kind of fits in, bro. She should be their fourth. Oh my God, I'm kidding. I felt the heat. Thank you very much. Pleasure. It's our last family meal together. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? You want to carve it? Keep going. Thank you. Look at that. What I'm keen to find out what the future holds for the thruple if Nicole decides to leave. Roasting is totally 100% my favourite meal. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. I mean, for us, all we would want, I guess, is to give people a clearer insight, like the good and the bad. Like, because Are you I think. Are trying to say give people a better home? No, 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 we're not trying to say that. No. We're talking about having. Wait, what? Clearer insight, like the good and the bad. Like, because Are you I think. Are trying to say give people a better home? No, no, we're not trying don't match what he's saying. So I can't understand him that people have a better home, but people have a different home. What is he saying? I'm going to say that. We're talking about having the conversation about our relationship and like how it's good to let people know like the, the proper truth, Stan. Yeah, we're not saying it's like the way to have a relationship, but for us it works. So am I right in thinking that polyamory, sort of broadly speaking, doesn't work for everyone, no. but it certainly works for you, mm -hmm. but it does require a lot of patience, communication, understanding. I that. think that counts for any relationship. Any relationship. You do have to work at it. But it's you like... have an added layer of complication, I suppose. Mm, there's more emotion. Yeah. There's more people with other emotions. There are more people and more emotions. <laughs> Nicole, I feel like everything in terms of 
the th- I think the reason it differs from having kids over parents, because with lots of kids, you still have lots of emotions. The only difference is that whether or not there's two parents and 10 kids or two parents and two kids, the parents are still making the final decisions and there's only two of them to make it. Versus in a polyamorous or open relationship, there might be more than one adult making a decision. So in this situation, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Do all three of them get a say in how to raise the kid? Or is it two of them get a say and the third person is just like a, an extra, like an auntie? And that's what I'm trying to figure out about the dynamic, I guess. Thruple is a bit up in the air at the moment and there are no mm-hmm. labels and you're not together sort of girlfriend and okay, okay. boyfriend. Mm-hmm. But if you were... Okay, okay, okay. So they're dating. And they're not anchored. The two main couple is. But the third girl, she's dating. And it's been about a year. So, okay. We're putting, okay. So it would make sense that about this time, they would make a decision to continue or to do something different. To leave this family unit for good. Mm-hmm. What would you miss? I would miss the togetherness. Mm. Like, in this relationship, you have two partners to support you in whatever you're doing. And... We're three people that fit really well together. Sometimes it's hard to find two people that do, but to find three, it's rare. In fact, as you were talking about leaving, I felt I was welling up. Oh. Oh. You look emotional now. I am actually thinking about, thinking about this sort of splitting up kind of thing, because it does affect you. It's quite distressing. That's all. Oh, for me. <laughs> Sorry. Just never expected this. No. Like, if you'd have said to me, Friday morning, <clears throat> on the Sunday, Catherine's father's going to be nearly in tears because the thruple isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, surely he's going to be relieved. <laughs> and then it goes back to, you know, her daughter just having her man without another woman on the scene. Boring. <laughs> 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 As Derek says his goodbyes. Love you all. Bye. 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 My final night in the polyamorous household draws to a close. I hurried from my room and went to the Great Hall West. And I really feel as though I'm part of this very fluid family. Nicole, that's so nice. I cannot have anyone touch my feet. I will kick you right in the face. I am so ticklish. Girl, I can't even get my nails painted. It is so difficult. I fucking love my feet being played with and my hair. Oh my God, Nicole, you're the best. My favorite. Absolutely not, absolutely not. Of the thruple. (laughs) Tonight, Nicole will be sleeping with Kathy and Thomas upstairs on a camp bed. And I'll be on the sofa bed again. Hmm. Interesting. It's early Monday morning. Here he is. Morning. Are you working today? Um, I may... Go- why do I feel like... Why do I... I just... Go in later, yeah. I said to Nicole I might take her for lunch. Just you, Nicole. Just me and her, good chill. I feel like you are all together. Mm. I feel that too. As an outsider looking in. Very fluid. That's the way forward. It's just one colour thing going on. Hello. We're all like, no. Like we look like we're in a band, stand <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh my God, look at us. We turned into each other. <laughs> yeah. That's That's that weekend, we can... We morphed we're in one weekend. Oh my God. I know we've like joked about it over the weekend, but do you think there's like a glimmer of a chance that 10, 15 <laughs> years smile at <laughs> into a relationship with someone, if you hit a point where maybe you attracted to someone else or they were, could you facilitate an, an arrangement similar to this? At this moment in time, I really don't think it's for me. I'd drive myself loopy. I'd hate it, actually. Mm. Do you think you... It's good to know that about yourself, you know? You will be polyamorous forever. I think we'll always be open. It's that thing as well of asking one other individual to give you everything you need. One person. That's when I, you're settling. You're settling if you need more than one person to give you everything you need. That's what I mean. I have everything I could need from my person because they're my soulmate.
There's nothing I don't get from him that I would need from a need, not want, need from another person. And the chances of meeting that person again, because that's the only reason I would be with you. I'm not changing my life for somebody that doesn't give me everything I need. And I feel like in a lot of relationships, monogamous or poly, people settle and they pine for this person that will fill everything they need, not want. Nobody cares about wants. This isn't hedonism, okay? It's about need. My partner gives me everything I need. So we're good. I give him everything he needs, right? That's what we were looking for. It's not about getting everything we want. We don't have everything we want. We have everything we need from each other. This is the first human I have found that gave me everything I needed and I could give them everything they needed. Because need alone is a huge requirement. I think people think want is the hard part. Need is the hard part. You don't even know what you need. So he's saying it right now. This is the flaw in Polly that I even thought as well. When I was in my 20s, I thought the same thing. This is the flaw I see in monogamous relationships. Oh, you're not going to get everything you need from one person, but it's okay. Uh, If you don't get everything you need from one person, find somebody else to fulfill that one thing. How is that other person going to fucking feel when you're like, hey, I just need someone who does this one thing for me. Can you do it? Cool. That's all I want from you. It's like, bro. Okay. Need. Okay. Not wants. Need. But again, the structure of my relationship is different. Your relationship doesn't have to work that way. Okay, I'm focused on needs in life, not wants. I'm focused on reasonable suffering, not hedonism. I'm focused on building a life with somebody in a very particular way and somebody I can bear my soul to and vice versa. In order to do that, I would have to, I would have to find somebody who fulfills my needs, not my wants. Wants are, wants are, we both play the same video games. Needs are, We both know what to do if we're in a life and death situation and somebody has to pull the plug. Needs. I have needs. Wants can wait. Person. I see, I quite like the idea of that. It's, it's. Maybe I'm being too romantic, but I love that idea. Like I meet this guy, here we go then, let's go and take on the world. Like it's me and you. Do you think that could exist? I think it does, yeah, in some cases. I really have to take my son to school. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. My time with Kathy, Thomas, Nicole and Stanley has come to an end. Relationships are hard, you know, so they've come up with this sort of alternative solution. I appreciate outsiders will think, oh, this is so confusing. Are they together? Aren't they together? I think we can all agree that the relationship is fluid. I think one of the reasons the other girl fell out of love with Thomas It's probably because she wasn't getting her needs, but she was getting lots of wants, you know? And I think that's totally fair. I think she's probably interested in this guy in Australia because he's probably going to fulfill more needs, right? Which is why there's always that issue. It's like, you know, you give me everything I need, you know? Have I had this sort of eureka moment, this light bulb moment? I get it. It's for me. I'm converted. What about Sunday lunch? No. Of course not, but... I fully respect who they are, what they want to do in their own home. You'll be back next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've got another weekend. I'll be back for Friday night, Saturday night. Knock yourself out. (laughs) Bye, mate. Sadly right. missed, Stacey. Going, right. That was really nice. I really like the way she handled it, honestly. Like she she could have asked less sex questions and more like trust questions, but I think he ultimately did it right at the end where he said, you know, you know, why again, I think ultimately, like, why are you in these kinds of relationships? I think is kind of the key. All right. Take care. Bye, honey. Bye. See ya. That pig, bro. <gasps> Nicole has moved out of the family home and is still doing long distance with her Australian boyfriend. But she has also uh, what she has also shared more than a few kisses with Kathy. Thomas and Kathy are dating other people, but haven't met a new thruple partner. Okay, 
That was cool. I'm so glad we watched that. She's my new favorite. I'm going to subscribe and like this video. Oh, this is Origin and this is Stacey Dooley. We love Stacey Dooley now. We're fans. I think that was great. Fishy says, is it important? Uh, that someone's soulmate share all their core parts of themselves as in like they overlap between all those parts. So I don't think so personally. Um, I look at it more like values need to overlap, but core parts need to be understood. So I wouldn't say that you need to have the same core parts or your partner needs to identify with those core parts so much as your partner needs to understand them. And then the thing that needs to be shared is your values right? Because the core parts are your identity. Your identity is in your values. There's an assumption in America that your identity, or maybe around the world, but an identity tells you your values. That's only somewhat true of certain identities. You could identify as a Muslim or a Catholic, and therefore you could infer or assume that that could mean that one has a, a value of uh, I'm trying to think of a shared value they both have, uh, that adultery is wrong, right? So like they would both agree adultery is wrong, but just because they both believe, you know, it's like different, it's values. Now, some identities and for value, like some people might say you're gay, so you must be a liberal. Well, okay, that's not true, right? Like some gay people are conservative, that, that exists. So I don't want to assume that because you're gay, you're also pro-life, right? Like that, I don't want to assume that. I don't even want to assume if you're conservative, you're also pro-life, even though that could mean that for some people. So when I think about core parts of a person, I think about a person understanding them and especially validating them. Uh, but the shared thing is the values, in my opinion. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I since I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm